Oh yeah, it's time to kick ass and chew bugs, and I've got plenty of both, cause I'm a marauder. Damn straight. Oh, who the hell is that? Shit, interrupting my post-coitus nude space window basking. Not now, Hey, five minutes is all I need, baby. Okay, what do you- OH MY GOD, WHAT THE HELL HAPPENED TO YOUR FACE?! Hey guys, welcome to a new show I'm going to start doing regularly, I hope. Though, for now, I'm thinking once a month or so might be about as good as it can get. At least until things calm down or change up for me. CFW Game Reviews. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? I've decided to switch the focus of this channel from Let's Plays to Game Reviews for a few reasons, but primarily because I just don't have the time to do Let's Plays. Don't get me wrong, I'll still be doing Let's Plays, but not very often. I'll probably just record a whole bunch of them for one game and post like five or six episodes instead of trying to work in a weekly schedule. So I figured I would start all this off by doing a game that I've kind of been teasing for like, what, five years now? Yeah, almost five years, and that game is Starship Troopers. I'm not sure why I wanted to review this game in the first place. I, I think it was just because it was fresh in my mind at the time. Whatever the reason, it wasn't good enough to justify doing all this. This game is pretty bad. But we can get into all that in a few minutes, because before I say anything, I want to talk about what a pain in the ass it was to get this game running. See, this thing came out in 2005, and even back then, it ran like shit. I remember when I first bought it, I was all excited. I was like, holy crap, a Starship Troopers first-person shooter? I love Starship Troopers! And I love shooters! It's like a game that was made just for me! How in the hell could they screw that up? Oh, hey, what's this? Enter the Matrix? I love Enter the Matrix! It's all kung fu and robots, how could they possibly screw that up? I mean, I bought the limited edition, you know, the only copy of the game that was sold in stores, and check out that box! That box cover says everything you need to know right there. Bugs. A lot of bugs. Fuck yeah! Bugs, sir. Millions of them. How many millions, trooper? Ah. Uh... Uh, at least three? Inside the box, you get a key binding sheet. Yeah, remember those things? An art book and a friggin' poster that I gotta be really careful folding back up here. Look at this concept art. That's amazing. I can't wait to get to campaign two, mission three. Oh. Uh. So I slapped that disc in, installed it, and the installer crashed. So I tried again, and it crashed. So I downloaded a patch, deleted the registry, installed the patch, and installed the game, and it crashed. So I uninstalled and reinstalled my video drivers, defragged the hard drive, deleted the registry, and ran the install and compatibility mode for Windows 98, even though it said it needed Windows XP. But that did the trick! This is for you new people! Oh it's shit, it's Rico! Oh fuck yeah, am I gonna get to fight along- HOLY SHIT, WHAT THE FUCK IS THIS?! Oh my- God! Did everyone get fucking acid burns? I could make better textures than this! Wait! I HAVE made better textures than this! Try and figure out who is saying what in this conversation. I dare you. Ever drink another drop, you can shoot me. I'm sure if you ever get that disorderly again, the Sarge will shoot you himself. Especially if you insist on talking to his wife like that. You're kidding me. I don't remember that. I saw you with my own eyes. No doubt Sarge will drill you hard the next time we're at boot camp. I think I am going to need to make a quick run to the store. The store? How? I will ride your mom. <laughs> Good one. That is what she said. So yeah, you might have figured it out by now, but this game did not give me a good first impression. I mean, it really didn't. After about three hours, I put it away and didn't pick it up again until 2012 when I made that ending defeating the trolls. I actually filmed the whole game after that too. I was really serious about reviewing it, but then life happened and kept happening. I think real life hates me. I mean, not nearly as much as some people. I no, but definitely if I have plans and make the mistake of telling you guys about those plans, real life comes along and says, 
Oh, you wanted to get all those videos done. Well, here's a speeding ticket and a few dozen major life decisions for you. That should do the trick. Oh, you passed that? Well, shouldn't you really be writing that book and not working on some video that's not really important to your future? That's just sort of how things usually go for me in big projects. So let's back up a bit here and get into this. If you haven't guessed by now, Starship Troopers is a first-person shooter that puts you in the boots of a Spartan. I mean, a Marauder. A highly trained super soldier who uses power armor equipped with a shield generator and radar to help fight the Covenant. I mean, the space bugs. You'll be braving the environment of Hesperus, a world that has been recently conquered by the Arachnids with the goal of liberating it from insect rule. Oh, and it's your first day. Typical. First day with the Marauders and you're late for training. I'm not at all impressed with how you behaved last night. So you get suited up in your EVA foam armor, get some weapons training. Isn't this grenade the cutest grenade ever? Three, two. How come there aren't plushies of this? This would sell like mad at a Spencer's or a Hot Topic. Anyway, you do that and you meet your pilot who, like everyone else, has gotten a face transplant before the ship gets attacked by plasma bugs, forcing you to drop right into the thick of battle. These first few levels are spot on. You get to run around with a squad, get attacked by wave after wave of bugs, and put shield fences up while some engineer runs right into a bunch of bloodthirsty arachnids like he just don't give a fuck. The level after this is just like the outpost in the movie, which is awesome! Ah! Die, motherfuckers! But then you get a solo mission, and everything just kind of grinds to a halt. You go after hundreds of bugs by yourself, and it just becomes a circle strafing arena, where instead of fighting a boss, you're shooting at a swarm. I shouldn't have to, but let me explain something about Starship Troopers. There's an S in the name. When I think of Starship Troopers, I think of a big group of space marines fighting an even bigger group of bugs. Camaraderie. You know, what you do when you kill your commander. You're on again, off again, girlfriend dying in your arms from being stabbed through the gut by a giant space ant. Getting your brain sucked out. Space football, Nazis, and so on. Much to look at after you scrape them off your boot. You know what I don't think of? Master Chief getting killed by plasma frogs in a flat gray metal hallway. And that's the game. Oh, you don't like matte gray hallways? Well, how about some matte gray caves? Don't like fighting alone against a hundred bugs that can cheap shot you in the middle of the day in a tan desert? Well, how about fighting alone against hundreds of bugs that can cheap shot you in the middle of the day in a gray desert? Hey, remember how real and actually organic that ship interior felt like at the start of the game? With all the burn victims in bad cosplay suits? Well, get Get ready because you're never going there again. You never get to see the inside of this ship and all that shit that could have been put there ever again. You never see your pilot's weird face ever again. You never get to take a nap ever again. Nope, from here on out, it's gray caves, tan caves, gray deserts at night, gray concrete bunkers, and gray metal corridors. Shit, why did you leave all that out? This game is hurting for just any kind of characterization from anyone. The only person who kind of gets some is this SS general. But I can feel the anger of every bug in the area. He actually has a kind of arc. He starts off the game dismissive towards the player and ends the game slightly less dismissive. Wow. And you might be thinking, Weasel, you can't ask for characterization in a movie tie-in arcade first-person shooter. And you would be right, except there is a story here. A bad story, but there's still a story. I mean, hell, at the very least, they could have added in some radio chatter dialogue or... I don't know, let my character talk? I mean, I get that silent protagonists have their place, but this isn't Half-Life, it's Starship Troopers! Put your hand on that wall! Even if the lines were corny and predictable, Come on, you ain't, you wanna live it would at least somewhat connect me to my own character. Without it, I feel like I'm playing a mute clone with eyes and maybe a dick. 
With all that being said, I actually feel like there may have been a more complete story at one point. The reason I think that is because midway through the game, you have to go into this abandoned hazardous waste site to track down a missing Spartan. To track down a missing Marauder? Shit, hold on, let me reload. Damn it. Damn it. How can I fight if I can't see anything? Fuck this, I'm cheating. If the game wants me to play fair, it wouldn't fuck up. So you find the guy, and he's down there with a nuke for some reason. Anyway, he's dying, and the last thing he tells you is, don't trust PsyOps. You know, these guys. The first time I saw that way back when, I thought, oh shit, PsyOps is working to help the bugs. I'll have to fight against my own now. Maybe even try to capture a ship. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. They dropped that storyline entirely after this point. I'm serious. What the hell happened? The next mission or so after that, you're working directly for General Hauser, a big wig in PsyOps, and it seems like your main goal is to get him to like you? Uh, good of you to join me, Marauder. But sprinkled throughout that are little bits of dialogues and scenes that hint that Hauser was a bad guy. You can hear this, Marauder. Take care. Be careful. Be very, very careful. But nothing ever comes of it. You may not like me, Marauder. But if you survive, you may come to thank me. It's like they had this whole other half of the story that they had to cut to meet a deadline or something. The whole lack of a story overall really hurts the game, and with no real mental support for the player, the whole thing decays down to just you playing some tough asshole running around a gray hallway. One that you may or may not be able to see, by the way. Shooting bugs. I've thrown into worse places. A few of the instruments are flipping, just like the Badlands all over again. Yeah, well I'm flipping too. This is a dangerous area. Yeah, I remember this scene in Starship Troopers. And while we're on the subject of gameplay, let's talk about the weapons. According to the box, we'll be fighting with a nuke launcher, intelligent grenades, and seven other weapons. Well, that's a lie. As cute as the grenades are, they're not intelligent. They go boom on a timer. Regular grenades do that. These things just have a face. I think you only get to use the nuke launcher twice in the whole game. And the first time it's stuck on a platform, so you really only get to push a button, so I'm not even counting that. As for these seven other weapons, well, in the manual, not counting the grenades and the nuke launcher, there's actually nine. But let's take a look at that first five. You notice anything? That's right. Four of them are the same fucking gun. They just have different attachments. One has a shotgun attachment that's weaker than the regular shotgun you get. One of them just has a scope. One of them has a grenade launcher that's worse than the one on the weakest gun in the whole damn game. And the other one, and I swear I'm not making this up, has a secondary fire that makes it shoot faster. Wow, that definitely justifies being a separate gun. You know, I'm not in the military, nor do I ever want to be in the military, but I do know they would rather have one gun that does a lot of things than lug around a bunch of the same gun with different attachments. Ah! Holy shit! An armored tanker! Good thing I've got my Mako MK2 with attached plasma rifle! Eat this, tanker! Ah! Yeah, eat plasma, you bitch! Oh shit, though! There's a bug that's really far away. Good thing I've got my Mako MK2 with attached sight on it. Eat this, even though this rifle is very small. Yeah, got you right between your bastard bug eyes. Oh shit though, there's a big group of bugs. Good thing I've got my Mako MK2 with attached grenade launcher. Take this, bug bastard menace bastards. Yeah, hope you like burning in hell. Oh god, though, that bug got really close to me! Good thing I had my Mako MK2 with attached shotgun attachment. Ah, damn it, but I splattered its bug bits all over the toilet. Good thing I've got my Mako MK2 with toilet plunger attachment and Mako MK2 with toilet bowl cleaning attachment. Take this, dirt and grime! Ah! As far as the sound in the game as a whole, it's in there in patches. Sometimes the sound just cuts out. Other times there'll be a horde of bugs right in front of me and I'll hear maybe two of them. 
The music is all score from the movie, which would work if I wasn't fucking alone! You know what might help this situation? If instead of one Marauder, there were maybe three or four of them, with different personalities and some character development, or barring that, just don't use super soldiers at all. Why not take the Starship Troopers license and go full Battlefield on it? Actually, you don't even need to imagine that because someone already did it. I shouldn't harp on the music too much though, since it's one of the few things that can actually make you feel like you're playing a Starship Troopers game. Like, right here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Then BOOM! Fuck you, you can't have friends. Why is one guy doing all this shit anyway? just wading into crowds of bugs like it's fucking nothing. I don't remember them being quite so ineffectual in the movie. Let's take a moment to talk about these bugs. The game uses the swarm engine, which allows for hundreds of enemies on screen at the same time. It looks pretty impressive actually for the time, and while the AI is kinda stupid, the bugs in the movie weren't that smart either. They actually look pretty decent up close, and if you get far enough away, the engine converts them to 2D sprites. But they have to be pretty far away for that to happen. It's fun having a huge group of them come charging up on you and your buddies, but when it's just you, it becomes a chore to circle strafe a group that long Large and it just bogs down the whole game. You get a good variety of them though, from standard arachnids to flying green bugs to tankers, and they're all cool except for maybe the tankers as fighting them gets really repetitive at times. The worst of the bugs though have to be these purple hopping plasma bugs. I hate these things. They swarm over you from out of nowhere and can drain your shields and health in a matter of seconds. Plus, they like to hang around in confined areas where you can't move next to larger bugs that take chunks out of your ass while you're trying to run around shooting the little purple ones. At the end and the beginning of each level, you get a quick narration in a video segment made up of scenes from the first movie and the Heroes of the Federation. I don't know exactly why. Apparently, this game took three years to develop, and in all that time, they couldn't make their own intros. I mean, even if they still looked like crap, at least they'd be theirs, you know? After level 4, the game just starts repeating itself. Gray caves, gray corridors, hundreds of bugs, gray canyons, tan canyons, tan caves... Ah, uh, I bet from space this planet looks like it's made from fingerprints, as many box canyons as it has. Eventually, the game got so boring and monotonous that instead of using cheats to get out of the many, many game-ending glitches, I just straight up left them on and walked through the bugs. I mean, fuck it. How many goddamn times does this thing expect me to clear out canyon after canyon of bugs? Alone. Identical cave after identical cave after identical corridor after- Ah! Fucking vectors are attacking again! This moment right here is the last time I had fun in the game. Not joking. It got so damn bad that these were my actual thoughts during the last boss battle. Huh. I wonder if the alligator ate Charlie's body after he died for the second time and all dogs go to heaven. I mean, alligators can be scavengers and the body would have been right there. I wonder how long alligators live. I think it's pretty long, like 80 years or something. If I got turned into an alligator, my life would be less complicated in some ways and more complicated in- Oh hey, I beat the game! Marauder, this is a personal message from me, General Rico. It has been a real pleasure to see how you've coped with the bug threat on Hesperus. When I assisted in the capture of the brain bug five years ago on Clendathu, little did I know that a hero would come and take my place. Hell, you even outdid Private Zim, and I can tell you, that takes some doing. I want to thank you personally for what you've achieved for the Federation. You're a great trooper. A starship trooper. That's it? That's what I get after wasting eight hours on this thing? Casper Van Dien telling me I'm a starship trooper? Oh wow, you made it through this tan cave? You're a starship trooper! Oh cool, you single-handedly took on multiple bug armies? 
saved the invasion force, defeated a mutated royal bug warrior, and captured a brain bug, and destroyed three bug nests, and screwed your pilot? You're a starship trooper! I'm sorry, but doesn't the fact that I'm a soldier stationed on a starship already make me a starship trooper? Well, this is not the worst game ending I've ever seen, it's right the fuck up there. I can't believe I spent 40 bucks on this thing when it came out. I can't believe I've hung on to it for this damn long. Fuck this game. Okay, let's wrap this up. Now, the way I want to do this is I want to end each review by dividing the game into its components, giving it a number score, averaging them out, and handing out a letter grade like this is fucking elementary school. So, here we go. In order of my opinion of importance. Story. 60. While it is very, very weak, it is there, and it does serve the purpose of driving the various gray caves and tan canyons forward. But it offers nothing else, and to boot, it looks like it's halfway scrapped. But the fact that what is basically an arcade shooter even has one that's followable alone keeps this grade from slipping into an F. Gameplay. 50. An F. It exists, but that's about it. The feel is so generic, the movement so clunky, and the action so repetitive that it all starts to feel less like an escapist fantasy and more like yard work. No matter how many times you mow the grass, it always grows back. Always. And really, if I have to psych myself up to play your game, you did something wrong. Graphics. 75. This was kind of a mixed bag for me. When I first looked up reviews from this when it came out, a lot of people were complaining that the graphics had to be set so low that everything looked shitty. But I'm running this game on a rig that was impossible at the time. And even though I have to run the game through a virtual XP machine, I can still play everything on Ultra when the game is cooperating. Looking at the game at its best, I can see a lot of attention to detail went into the bugs. I mean a lot. But everything else, just setting aside the environmental textures that are pretty awful at the best of times, what the fuck happened to the people? Who decided that the mobile infantry needed to look like it was made up of corpses that had just been taken out of formaldehyde tanks? Why do their bodies look and move like gray stuffed animals? And really, if you're going to go through the trouble of putting moving mouths on them, why model them after the ones off the evil monkey dolls? Felix, I'm gonna kill you! Why even put mouths on to start with? Just swap face textures if it's gonna look that bad. Music. 65. While the majority of it is just barely serviceable, the movie score it uses is pretty good, and really helps out on those few and far between points where the game actually feels like its source material. Gimmick. 80. This score is just how well the unique part of the game works out. Not all games I review will get this, but a lot will. Anyway, I have to say, on the highest settings, seeing 200 plus enemies running at you is pretty impressive. Now, when you're on your own, at ground level, or just running past them because you can and you don't want to deal, it's less impressive. But for what it is and when it came out, it's pretty cool, I have to admit it. And finally, the totally subjective score, fun. Out of 100, what percent of the time was I actually enjoying the game? I guess you already know, this score is not going to be the highest. 23. I would say about 23% of the time, I was having fun. The rest was just a slog. A long, boring, glitch-filled slog. This is fun. This is not fun. Not at all. Fun? Fun? Not fun. Fun? Not fun. Really? Really not fun. So if we average those scores out, that's a 58. An F plus, but it's still an F. I feel kind of bad giving the game that, but I'm being honest, this was not a good game. Now, I completely skipped over the multiplayer because I don't want to rope any of my friends into the headache that is playing a multiplayer game on a virtual machine using two computers with different operating systems, namely Windows 8.1 and Windows 10, because I actually like my friends. So since I can't review the game in its entirety, I'll be willing to count that as extra credit and bump the game's grade up to a 60. A D minus, but still a pass. Congratulations, Starship Troopers. You get to go on to middle school.
Now, if for some reason you want to play this game, you can still buy copies of it for around 30 bucks. But since the developers are both defunct and no one's getting any money, how you actually end up getting the game is sort of open for interpretation. However, if you get it, you'll either have to have Windows XP or be running a virtual machine. Anything less and the game just won't start. I would also recommend downloading the 2005 NVIDIA patch listed in the description, since that seems to have fixed a few issues with the standalone retail version. Though again, apparently most of those issues involve the multiplayer, so I don't really know. Okay, I think that's about it. Wow. Like, five years in the making. Hope it was good. This was my first long-form game review, so, you know, let me know what you thought in the comments below where I might be able to improve and what more you wanted to see and so on. So, yeah, I'm finally done. I finally did this review. Ah, come by next time for High Noon and Deep Space. And as always, have a good day. Ah! Ah! Holy shit! That bug's really far away! Good thing I've got my MK2 with sight attached to it! Ah! Yeah, that gotcha! But oh my god, that bug's really close! Good thing I've got my MK2 with shotgun attachment! Eat this bug menace! Yeah! Ah, that killed it, but that bug's armored! Don't worry though, cause I've got my MK2 with plasma rifle attachment!